Hello guys, remember me? I'm Orbiter, your Welsh engineer. And I'm doing this short video because there's been a bit of a hackers about the video I uploaded about stop flipping rockets. Basically, it was going to be a short tutorial on how to stop your rocket from flipping over. Basically, I had the uh, or is it the space station tutorial on how to build a space station and I built this and people are having problems with it flipping out. So if I show you over here and I over turn, there you go, see, flip out. And that's what people are having problems with. I didn't have a problem with it because I worked out at the time that the best way to get proper launch is to head prograde. Pro However, even I had problems with building large rockets and well, my rock is flipping now. But anyway, people have been complaining that I said the center of mass, if you have the center of mass on the bottom, then you're not going to flip out so easily. And I may or may not be right. In fact, I have read up on this, but I'm going to do an experiment before I reveal what I found out. So let's go to the VAB, Earth flight to a vehicle assembly building. I will build an experimental rocket that will test the theory where people have been complaining about, you know, center of mass has to be as far forward as possible to make the rocket stable. Now, my theory was, at the time, and this was not from, you know, looking everything up. This was actually from my experience with playing Kerbal Space Program. The thing is, with Kerbal Space Program, things could appear one way where it is actually another way. Let's put a parachute on there. We don't want our kerbals to die. Okay, so let's do this experiment. First off, let's test my theory that the bottom, the center of mass should be on the bottom. Now, I do know one thing. The, oh, what is it called? The center of, ooh, there's a name for it. The center of lift, I suppose, the lifting body from the side of the rocket. Or the center of pressure, I think, is the rocketeers refer to it as, has to be below the center of mass. So that's what that I do know. So, for example, I'm going to put a mainsail engine on here to make it nice and fast. Let's fill this up with ore. So we, the center of mass is as far down. Let's put that up there and I'll show you how much of the center of mass changes. Okay, this is lower in the rocket. What I'm going to do for this experiment, I did quickly test this out. I'm going to reduce, fire the rocket straight up until the top tack is empty for every experiment for where the weight is on the top of the bomb. And then we'll test it, then we'll see how far it goes before it flips out. And that will show how far, it, how stable the rocket should be. Okay, so we have this set up. Oh yes, one thing, all rockets have winglets. So I was saying that let's use the larger ones, we the Dulux winglets. Let's put four on there. Now this, as I said, the center of pressure has to be on the re close behind the center of mass. That way, you have sort of like pivot the air hits the side of the rocket, trying to stabilize it with the center of mass forward. It wasn't that I was saying that the center of mass has to be really low behind the thrust, as some people have been saying. No, that's wrong. The center of thrust should be straight on the bottom. You can't have the center of thrust up here like a pendulum rocket. That doesn't work. There's a, there's a whole discussion about that. I watched an old Scott Manley video about that. It's called the pendulum fall fallacy, where the rocket becomes unstable. Okay, let's go launch this. This is test number one, with the center of mass closer to the bottom of the rocket. And we'll see how easy this is to flip out, then we'll do the center of mass on the top, and we can compare the results. Now I'm a guy which I like science, I prefer to test it out, so rather than go straight to the comments and research everything up, I know NASA's done a lot of research on this and everything, I'll just bring that up. All right, three, two, one, bring up. Uh, overlay aerodynamic forces. Oh, sorry. Derp, me derp. I forgot I didn't put a stage in there, a separation stage. So it didn't stack the the action groups, not the action groups. Didn't just put these right, the stages. So let's put the rocket first. And again, set everything up. T, Z. Bring that up. Launch! I'm going to go straight up. I'm going to wait until that top tank is empty. Then we'll see how far we turn on the nav ball before we flip out. And they will do the same with the 
top heavy rocket and see how stable it is. Okay, I do know there's three forces working on this. One, the thrust. Two, the gravity. Three, aerodynamics. So, let's... Okay, we're almost empty. Okay, tilting over. Five degrees, no flip out. Ten degrees, ooh. See, just over ten degrees, we've got to flip out. Okay, you can see the aerodynamic forces flipping us out. Let's go back to the vehicle assembly building and try the method where the, the center of mass is high in the rocket. Okay, let's take them off there. Take that off there. We need you on top, buddy. Okay. Exact same setup. And let's launch. Now, in the theory of everybody, or not everybody's, most people have commented, or they said the center of mass has to be at the top. Now, I'm not going to say that I was right or wrong, and I used the wrong analogy where to balance a pencil on your finger. That's a different story. That's because the weight's high up. You can move the pencil about a bit more easily where the weight is high up. It's like, um, now let's do a start this. Overlay. Top tank, launch. Oh, balls, I did it again. Ready to launch. Yes, this is me doing it everything live. So <laughs> you have to excuse all the mess ups. Okay, so let's put the rocket down here. T, Z, overlay. Three, two, one, launch. Ooh. Yes, yeah, like balancing an object which has heavier um, center of mass on it is easier because you've got more control on the bottom. However, that won't work for a rocket because your rocket will be wobbling all over the place, I think. But then you've got aerodynamic forces applying to it. Okay, get ready, getting ready. Okay, top tank is empty, let's turn over, we're at 5, we're at 10, I have to keep on over moving over a bit, we're over 10, Ooh, let's do it over 10 because look, 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 yes I'm having trouble tipple, tilting this rocket over far enough to flip out. So yes guys, those people were right in the comments that saying that center mass has to be as high as possible. Okay, now let's go into the problem that I was having. The reason why I thought that it was due to the center of mass. So vehicle assembly building. Now let's quickly put this together. Now, I'm going to say that's our payload. And on most of the rockets, when I started playing 1.0, version 1, when it was re-released, you had the fairings. And they were saying it would stop aerodynamic stresses and you'd, it'd be something required to stop the drag. So like on the capsule. Now I knew these capsules were fine, but you'd build the buildings like uh, the space station that I launched up in my tutorial. So let's, ooh, staging. Oh yeah, we got staging now. How oh, awesome. So let's go launch. But what I didn't consider was the lifting body physics. And it took me a while when I started that game to, not very long, just, you know, several launches, before I worked out that large rockets need to be designed differently. And I thought this fairing was one of them. So TZ, set, look, the center of mass is up high on the rocket. Let's launch. Again, experiment. Make sure that you have the same setup for this tank needs to be empty for our rocket to be exactly the same. Now I know the speed is going to be different on this because we've got the extra weight of the fairing. I'll have got the overlay. <laughs> okay, getting ready. We're obviously traveling a bit slower. I'm not sure how much weight these fairings are. That's another thing. I forget the fairings added a lot more weight. Okay, tank is empty. Let's go over to five degrees and we flip out. Yes, look at that big arrow on the top of the fairing where it should not be. It should be on the fairing itself. We have a lot more air pressure on the top, so 
the center of pressure, which is what they refer to it, is higher on top. Now, there is a conundrum that I thought about before. The Apollo rocket, that is a huge ass rocket. Now, hopefully I'll put an overlay on here. Postmark, don't forget to put the overlay picture on here. I found a picture on where the center of mass would be on this on the Apollo rocket, so it should be up on screen now. If you look at that, the center of mass is really low on that rocket. It's way lower than the center of pressure would be, I think. Now, how do you get over that? Well, simple. So if I revert flight to launch here, and show you guys what you need to keep your rocket stable is... Wait for it, wait for it. TZ overlay. Launch. Z, I say, and T. An overlay. Okay, let's tilt over. And what you have to do to keep this rocket stable is point it prograde. That's every rocket. You know, it doesn't matter how it was built up or whatever. Now, you do have problems like uh, you get sort of like slight. Uh, well, it's if you're perfectly going center, you should be right. But look at this. I launched. I'm not perfect. I hit the right key, but I'm not perfectly going at a 90 degree angle. That's because of slight imperfections, slight different calculations in the game. But if you are perfectly pointing prograde, say in the center of that, doing your gravity turn, you should not flip out. Now, this is hard because controlling your rocket, going, doing your gravity turn is hard too. Because I'm doing this manually. And I'm moving about a bit. I'm using all the wires to keys. Keep an eye on the navel. I'm not even looking at the rocket here. And I know it's a bit of a shame in the game. But it's something you have to do. It's it's hard playing this game when you first start it. It's there's a steep learning curve. But once you get over that learning curve, I figured out that you will do well. You will get in orbit, and most of your designs will work. You know, you can even get the worst design into orbit without any trouble. So anyway, guys, this is my small correction for my last video which seemed to cause a bit of huckers and I got quite a bit views from that and well that was quite mad I didn't expect it to be that that received that well I thought all right people complaining about that rockets flipping out from my space station tutorial which is the best video I've done so date because I explain everything you know from the build to launching to uh, building a space station I think but anyway, I'm rambling on. Hopefully this has cleared up that your rocket should be top heavy, but be careful of aerodynamics. Your center of lift, as you, as they call it in Kerbal Space Program, or center of pressure, as rocketeers would call it, should be behind your center of mass. So that's the only thing that I can add to it. However, if you go prograde, like the Apollo rocket that does with the extra control, then you'd be fine. The reason I succeeded with my large rocket was I put extra powerful engines on the bottom and I sort of clustered them around and then I had no problem because we had the extra control authority to keep us going prograde. Now don't put too much extra control on it because I found out that can also cause you to flip out with the instability of the rocket, especially with the controls of the SAS. <laughs> anyway guys, that's all going to be from that's all it's going to be from me for this quick experiment. All I can say by here is I'm Orbiter. Trust me, I'm an engineer. But not a space engineer. I'm an electronic engineer. <laughs> and even I get things wrong and I to correct this, 